It is time to continue Scarlet Hello episode 4. My name is Katie and I'm glad you are sharing this experience with me. Let's continue this awesome story. Where to next? As you consider your next steps, you remember your appointment with Sybil. She seemed to be confident last night that Stella would be okay. Maybe she'll be able to help you find her. Street smart, she's the only person who believed you and Stella from the beginning. She could prove to be a valuable asset. Okay, so the game clearly wants me to go and meet Sybil. I definitely will, yes. Talk to animals. And she'd never disparage your gift. Perhaps she's one of the few people in town who can truly understand you. I don't know, I don't trust her. But I guess we gotta go talk with her nevertheless. I will say it aloud, I have my reservations about her. I just, I can't trust her, but le yeah, let's go. We should talk to your mom. I'm supposed to have tea with her today. Sure, we can humor her. She's probably going to give you some rocks or bundles of herbs for protection or something. Which might actually work, who knows? Guess there's only one way to find out. Let's do it. Okay, Sybil looks worried. Let's take a look at the general store. Okay. I don't notice any drastic changes here. Luckily, I don't see any ditchlings inside this place. <laughs> I wonder when they get bold enough to enter houses to enter establishments here. The bells of the general store chime welcomingly as the three of you enter. Kanika, there you are. You were supposed to stay in bed today, remember? And hello, you two. Hope you're both recovered from last night's fiasco. Sorry, Mum. It's just that Stella's missing and I... Stella can take care of herself. Unlike you, you need bed rest and lots of fluids. You don't need to go running around town spreading that cold of yours. Go on, get up to bed. I'll be up in a minute with more tea. I thought you had some kind of important thing to talk to... Katie about? I'm really feeling okay. I want to hear what you wanted to say to her. I'll just be doing a tea reading. Haven't those always bored you to tears? <laughs> okay, you're right. I'm not feeling well. I should really lie down. Bye, Katie. Kanika turns and heads towards the stairs without saying another word. Street smart could think Kanika has her mom looking out for her. She seemed so tired today and you'll probably be able to find Stella without her. Hmm. And I'm so sorry to be a bad host, Avery. But I was hoping Katie and I could do our reading in private. I'm sure Winnie needs help at the diner. Oh, you're right. I've totally left her on her own today. Fine by me. I wouldn't want to mess with your tea vibes. I'm sure those leaves are very particular. Oh, but before I go, I did want to ask. Are you a witch? 
Street smart. Avery does not beat around the bush. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of noticed that. <laughs> as flattered as I am that you think I'm that magical, I'm just an old lady who likes tea and has a few unusual hobbies. She's so not what she says she is. Just an old lady who likes tea and has few unusual hobbies. That's so not true, but okay. I'll let it slide for now. Luke, I'm just saying. Doing stuff like reading tea leaves is pretty witchy as far as I'm concerned. But I won't push it. Though, just so you know, if you are a witch, you can totally tell us. We'd be cool about it. I'll leave you all to your not-supernatural private tea leaf reading. We'll catch up tomorrow, Katie. They make their way out of the general store, disappearing down the street in the direction of the diner. Now I'm all along with Sibyl. Shall we? I guess we shall. Sibyl motions towards the tea room. Follow Sibyl to the tea room, okay? Okay, why did we get the scary soundscape? That's not like... That's not a comforting soundscape. That is a, sc a scary soundscape. Is something bad about to happen? Anything weird here? No. Is that a card deck or something? It could be a book as well. I can't see it very clearly. Okay. It's gonna go fine. It's gonna be fine. Please have a seat. I'll bring you a fresh cup. You take a seat at the small table at the edge of the room. It's dark here. Only a sliver of sunlight able to filter through the heavy curtains. Supplemented by the bright grow lights over the plant in the corner. Okay, I think this definitely is a card deck and there are these minerals and this... This actually looks similar than what we saw in Tabitha's trailer, right? Some sort of jars and I guess these are teacups and butterflies and various herbs. Mortal and pestle and books, lots of books, okay. It's gonna go well. It's totally not gonna go well. She looks so scary. I'm not okay with this. She looks so scary. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know why I am so nervous. There is something really ominous about all of this. But okay, let's continue. Sybil joins you at the table and places a cup in front of you. It smells light and citrusy with an undercurrent of decaying earth. It's the same tea you sampled with Avery at the diner on Tuesday. Okay, so the tea they are using at the diner that many people are drinking in this town comes from Sybil. At least I'm assuming so. They might all be coffee drinkers and I just don't know it yet. I'll be able to do a reading once you're done. Until then, how about we just chat? Explore Scipio tea! So how did you wind up in Scarlet Hollow? The other day you promised to tell me, what was it? Unsavory tales of my mom's youth. Oh, true, yeah. She did say that. I totally forgot. 
Quit yanking me around. You have something to tell me, just come out and say it. <sighs> this. We are clearly not being told everything. She knows much more than she lets on. What's with all of the mystery and ritual? If you have something to tell me, just come out and say it. Drink the tea. What if there is something in the tea? I'm gonna start with this one. So, uh, how did you wind up in Scarlet Hollow? All my family's been in these hills for a long time. That's how I know so much of the local flora. Everything I've learned was handed down from generations of hill folk. There hasn't always been a reliable doctor up here, especially not one most folks could afford. They have to figure out their own medicine. Yeah, I guess we see our tea. Oh, that was a nasty sound. Ugh. Some sounds, some noises are the kind of which really give me goosebumps and that quote-unquote us sipping our tea is one of those sounds. I just, I can't take it. You take the tea, sipping it delicately. <laughs> it didn't sound like a delicate sip. <laughs> The citrus smell is fleeting, quickly replaced with the earthiness at its core. Like you've taken a mouthful of dirt. But the aftertaste combines the two flavors into something soothing and medicinal, and you find yourself feeling more comfortable, your muscles relaxing for the first time in days. The other day you promised to tell me, what was it? Unsavory tales of my mom's youth? I most certainly did, though I might have been exaggerating a bit for dramatic effect. I'm prone to do that. I don't doubt what you are saying at the moment. We all have our parts to play, you said. In a town this size, you get to know everybody, no matter what the age difference might be. Vivian was a little younger than me, which meant I always had a certain older sister instinct about her. Her family wasn't good to her. Perlan was a lot like your great grandmother, Edwardine. <gasps> now it's time to get to the juicy secrets. Which is to say, she was not a very kind woman. Okay, so perhaps our great grandmother, Edwardine, treated Berlan somehow badly and that's why Perlan treated Tabitha badly as well. Kind of previous generations problems descending from one generation to another. Also Edwardine was the one we saw in Charlie's memories. Edwardine was the one who killed Charlie with a baseball bat and she might have been carrying his child when it happened. So what the heck happened there? Also, is Charlie somehow related to us? Which part of that tale was the truth? So Sybil thinks Edwardine wasn't a very kind woman. She thinks that's why Perlan acted the way she did. Interesting. Similar to Thabitha, but with more social grace and considerably more hatred for her fellow man. But your mother wasn't a shrinking violet either. She was just as stubborn as any other Scarlet, so her family choosing her as their punching bag made her into quite the rebel. 
Why were Perlan and my mom raised by Edwardine? What happened to their mother? Were they raised by Edwardine? Okay, so Edwardine was not their mother. Oh, it seems I skipped a generation here. So Edwardine was not Perlan's and Vivian's mother, but their grandmother. Okay. What do you know about my grandma? I feel like I know a lot about the women in my family, but what about the men? Did they even exist? What happened when my mom found out she was pregnant? Change the subject. This is interesting. Why were Perlan and my mom raised by Edwardine? What happened to their mother? Their entry into this world was violent, I'm afraid. Their mother was young, too young to be pregnant, especially with twins. Too young to be pregnant, their entry into this world was violent. That doesn't sound good. <sighs> she didn't survive the labor. I'm like getting goosebumps all over my body and I'm shivering here because this conversation feels so intense. <laughs> what do you know about my grandma? I'm afraid there isn't much I can tell you. I think there were two in that generation. The eldest died when the girls were still children. Edwardine never spoke about them, nor did your mother. What happened when my mom found out she was pregnant? She came to me for advice. She was distraught. It was like she'd been handed a death sentence. Wow, you are really not beating around the bushes, okay? Maybe it was fear from what had happened to her own mother. Maybe it was something else. But she seemed convinced she was in danger. Tabitha had already been born by then, of course. But she was born in wedlock, so I assumed your mother's worries had something to do with religion. But wedlock, so Tabitha was born to a married couple, but why would my mother's worries have something to do with religion? Though the Scarlets weren't particularly religious as far as I knew, but the way Vivian was that night she came to me, it stuck in my mind. It's always had me wondering what it was about your family that made her panic so much at the thought of having a baby. I feel like I know a lot about the women in my family, but what about the men? Did they even exist? I suppose they just haven't been very noteworthy since Edwardine took over the mines. Her husband died a long time ago, and to be quite honest, I can't even recall his name. Might have been Stuart or something just as forgettable. From what Vivian said, her father was some teenaged fling that ended once your grandmother found out she was pregnant. I'm fairly certain it was similar for Vivian, though she was much older and I believe she was the one who ended it, what with skipping town and all. What's with all of the mystery and ritual? If you have something to tell me, just come out and say it. I'll need your tea leaves first. I have pieces of the puzzle, but the tea leaves should help to give me the full picture. Finish the tea. I hate that sound. 
I rarely say that I hate anything, but... <sighs> you close your eyes and take another sip, and then another. It's delightful. The tea is gone before you know it. The small cup empty, save for what's left of rehydrated leaves coating the bottom. Oh, good. Glad you found the tea platable enough to drink. It should do you some good. It's one of my more medicinal plans. Now, on to business. Okay, she looks serious, also worried. Sibyl takes the cup from you, staring thoughtfully down at the sludge. Oh dear, this doesn't bode well. You've got just about every warning that can fit in the bottom of a cup. Cross kettle hourglass. All of these mean death, misery, difficulty. And the hourglass ties it all together with definite urgency. It's fair to assume that this all has to do with whatever brought the ditchlings. Something is coming, and whether any of us can stop it, I'm not sure. But we may, at the very least, be able to figure out what it is. And there's a central figure here. A cat. An enemy lurking in plain sight. Okay. If that would be you, would you tell me? Just thinking out aloud here. Could you be my enemy without knowing it yet? Are we on the same side? Oh, the cat's gotta be Pixel, or maybe it's Fru-Fru. No, it's not Druck, is it? Those are the three cats I know. The cat could be Tabitha, the cat could be Wayne, the cat could be Stella, Kanika, Oscar, Reese, Avery. I guess Reese could be it as well. I mean, he's going through something, but he didn't seem like my enemy. The thing about Avery, <laughs> I begin to wonder this only lately. Who took over Avery's body when we were going through those visions, those moments Charlie wanted us to see? Who was Avery? Who was the prisoner inside that cell behind that locked door later? Who is that? Could that be Enoch? The cat could be Dr. Kelly. She's been nothing but hostile since I've met her. The cat could be Dustin. He's a possum who lives in my dresser. And I try and talk to him every day to hear his wisdom and help with his troubles. It would break my heart if he's the traitor. The cat could be Pastor Daniel. How do I know you're not the cat? <laughs> Heck it, we made a nosy character who can talk to animals. We have been quite straightforward with people so far, so... I'm sorry, Sibyl, I'm gonna go straight to the point. I'm gonna ask you this. How do I know that you're not the cat? That's weird. I didn't get the text. Usually I get the text before I get her reply, but this time I didn't. That's ridiculous. Sibyl is helping you. And if she was the cat, why would she warn you about herself? Pick someone else. What is this? Pick someone else. That is ridiculous. Is she helping us in order to gain knowledge herself? She wants to know more about us and I don't think she's doing this out of the goodness of her heart. She needs us for something and that is why 
she's doing what she's doing. So I'm wondering what is going on with this weird um, text. This feels weird because so far this game has not talked to us directly. Like, what what is happening with this? That's ridiculous. Are these supposed to be my thoughts? Because if I choose a conversation option here and then I receive this continuation, assumed continuation to my conversation option, which is supposed to, I guess, convey my thoughts or my doubts about the conversation option I chose. Why does it say big someone else? This sentence really throws me off. I don't think this is necessarily the truth either, but I need to pick one, so... I just want to hear what she says if I choose this conversation option. The cat could be Wayne. He follows me wherever I go, it's almost like he's literally lurking in plain sight. He says he's my friend, but I'm not sure that's true. But he's my good friend and I trust him. Why would I trust him? Why would I say that he's my good friend? Let's choose this option. He says he's my friend, but I'm not sure that's true. It's not. Don't trust a word out of that man's mouth. But I doubt he's the cat. The cat implies a certain level of two-facedness that I don't think he possesses. You don't have to figure out an answer right away. It often takes time for the mind to connect the dots. Just be on guard and keep vigilant that someone close to you isn't to be trusted. We know from the Ditchlings that something terrible is coming your way, and it's likely that it's connected to some hidden enemy. Perhaps we can try to counteract whatever might be planned for you. Judging by what you told me last night, those stones, carvings, seals, whatever you want to call them, I think it's likely they have something to do with this. Until the cat reveals itself, it seems like your best course of action is to seek these carvings out. Piece together what you can from your visions and arm yourself with information. Have you sensed any others around town? Do you think you might be able to find another? Your thoughts drift to that door yesterday. The one that seemed to draw you in, urging you deeper into the clinic. Hmm. <laughs> Even just remembering it is enough to talk at you, compelling you to return and open it, to see what's on the other side. You can find Stella later. Maybe you can even find her there. What's important now is finally seeing what's hidden in the clinic. I don't like this. I am genuinely worried about Stella's safety, but also very worried about the fact that <laughs> now it seems we feel a very strong compulsion to go and actually open that door. <laughs> mm. Street Smart Explore, you didn't get all this from the tea leaves. Yes. I think I felt another in the clinic. But bad stuff always happens around them. I shouldn't seek out more of them. Those stones need to be left undisturbed. Remain silent. Damn right, I'm gonna use my Street Smart option. You didn't get all this from the tea leaves. Street smart? Of course she didn't. She's smart. She knows how to deduce things from the leaves. Again, this um, inner monologue or inner thought throws me off. But I mean, I understand that this game is in early access, so they will probably 
take a look at what kind of sentences they are using during these conversation options, but this also feels out of place. I don't know if she knows how to deduce things from the leaves. I mean, she clearly b believes so, but whether I know that this is the truth? I don't know. I don't have any evidence yet, which would confirm that this is actually the case. Don't get me wrong, I get that she came and rescued us, but there are moments where she has clearly shown that she is pulling strings and not telling us everything she knows, and that has put us also in danger. She practically told Tabitha that she needs to give up years of her life. And here she's being again the warm and kindly old lady who is the mother of our friend and who just wants to give us warnings and keep us safe. But she didn't keep Tabby safe. She didn't for once ask Tabby if Tabby was okay. I don't remember precisely what kind of words she used, but she said it's rough or horrifying experience to have years of your life taken from you. And she showed no empathy towards Tabitha whatsoever. Of course not. Tea leaves are merely a guide. Sometimes they can help confirm suspicions or fill in where my intuition falls short. My family has lived in these hills a long time, as has yours. I know the Scarlets have secrets. I know Vivian was scared for you. But your place in all this is something we have to figure out together. And that's where little tricks like tea leaves come in handy. But we shouldn't digress. Do you know where you might find the next stone? I'm, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna say this. I think I felt another in the clinic. That's good. If you can find your way inside and uncover another stone, that could give you a leg up on your adversary. You'll just have to be careful to avoid the doctor. Something tells me she won't take too kindly to you sniffing around her clinic. I think that's all the help I can offer. I hope this conversation has been illuminating, even if it just brought up more questions than giving any clear answers. Ah, uh, you helped last night, why don't you come with me? That's it, this wasn't helpful at all. All you did was look at some leaves and tell me to go put myself in danger. Thanks, I'll let you know if I find anything. Leave the tea room. I'm gonna ask. You held last night. Why don't you come with me? I may have been able to see through that spirit's illusions, but I'm not some kind of all-powerful entity. I'm an old woman. I have trouble with my knees and my eyesight isn't what it used to be. In most situations, I'd be more of a liability than a helpful companion. Imagine if I'd been in those mines with you. Some use I'd be, struggling to climb over rocks and ladders, throwing my back out from all the crouching. How do you know we climbed over ladders. Have you been in the mines before? Do you know there are ladders? Let's be polite. Thanks, I'll let you know if I find anything. Glad to hear it. I hope all goes well and I wish you luck. Hopefully you don't need it. Thank you again for humoring an old lady and stopping by for a chat. With a small grunt of effort, Sybil gets up from the table 
and you're escorted back to the door. And remember, be careful who you put your trust in. According to your tea, the cat is getting ready to pounce, and merely being ready for it might not be enough. Sibyl closes the door to the tea room, the bells of its door strangely flat, in the stale air of the nearly empty general store. Talk to Miles, check in on Kranika, go to the clinic. Let's talk to Miles. Mm, is your mom a witch? <laughs> Ghosts are real. Just thought you should know. So Kranika has a cold? Huh? You see any weird rocks around town? So Kanika has a cold, huh? That's what she says. She's just trying to get out of work again. Like, I didn't have anything better to do all week. Well, she sits in her room watching anime. Says the guy in cuckoo pants. <laughs> it's probably good for her to have a week off. Why don't you two get along? Says the guy in cuckoo pants. Everybody knows Dragon Ball is good anime. She watches the trashy shit. <laughs> they clearly have different tastes in what comes to anime. Mm. You see any weird rocks around town? Well, they are everywhere. Yeah. You. He smirks. Clearly this is a very sick burn, and you should feel bested by his wit. <laughs> Teenagers. Let's ask what he thinks. Is your mom a witch? Wouldn't you like to know? I would actually. Can I trust her? Do you know? So she is a witch. Look, a lot of weird stuff is going on around town. I feel like a witch could be super helpful, so if she is one... I would actually. It's totally obvious that she's a witch. Like, you even need me to say it? Let's check in on Kanika. You're not going anywhere before checking in on Kanika. You make your way upstairs.